Hi, it's Rupert Hine here from Action Coach uh, near Ken Ross, and I'm joined today by Mick Beavers from Control Valve Solutions. Welcome, Mick. Hi, thank you very much for having me, Rupert. So you've been running Control Valve Solutions for what, 14 years now? 14 years, yep, 2009. What took you into ru- to starting your own business? Um, I think I was inspired by my previous three business owner uh, bosses, um, uh, Robert Ellis, uh, Paul Baker, and uh, Nick Burt. I think I, I, I see now they started their companies from from nothing. I always thought you, you can't start a business from from nothing; it's just impossible. But actually, I was living and breathing um, that kind of environment, um, and, and quite frankly, I was sick and tired of doing it for other people in in a way that I, I wasn't really enjoying. <clears throat> so I thought, sod it, let's uh, let's go alone, uh, be a consultant to the oil and gas industry. Um, and it snowballed from there, really. <laughs> so what was it about working in other people's businesses that helped you create hmm. the point of difference that you were looking to fill? So I think I, I've been blessed to work in... Um, in various companies, but the, but the three in particular um, that, that are referenced, um, I saw a lot of bad things in the business, but I didn't focus on them. I focused on the good things. And I, I realized that if you could put them three businesses together, they'd actually be an absolutely world-beating uh, company. They, they, they really would. They've got so much qualities, individual qualities um, from different areas um, so I really I honed in on on those qualities uh, and developed what we've got here uh, today at Control Valve Solutions. So it, it's really um, yeah pinching other people's ideas, I guess, taking the best ideas, uh, processes, uh, etc. And and also the the softer things like the cultural side, um, you know how not to treat people and how to treat people. It was uh, yeah I, I think I was. It was a learning journey for me, although I didn't really realise it at the time. It was only until you know really later on in my career with those companies that I realised actually uh, I'm in school and uh, <laughs> now I need to leave school and uh, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah, well, it's funny, isn't it? At school, we're taught told that copying other people is called cheating. Mm, exactly. When it comes to business, it's market research. Yep, that's right. So, so what's the what are the things that makes Control Valve Solutions special? What are the things that set you apart? So I think it's the uh, the mantra that we have. We have a, a mantra called HIT, uh, which is honesty, integrity, transparency, and safety. Um, I was always told that when I brought that out, if safety was first, as it should be, uh, it wouldn't quite spell HIT. <laughs> um, but, I, but I liked it. You know, It, it took me all of um, two seconds to, to come up with it, but I liked it as soon as I did come up with it because they are – you know, four qualities in the business that we absolutely stand by. Um, when anybody new comes into the business, we talk about hits, what it, what it means to be honest. You know, we don't want any white lies. We don't want any fibs. We don't want to hide anything from the client, from supply chain, from internal uh, stakeholders. We, we just want to be completely honest with everybody, um, which is, I think, for a lot of people, refreshing um, in this in this industry. You know, if we're going to be late uh, with the delivery of either a service or a product, um, then so be it. You know, we understand what that means to the client and we'll do absolutely everything we can to rectify that. But the first thing we must do is be completely upfront and honest with the client and, and transparent uh, and tell them, you know, we're, we're not going to deliver on, on the promises made, unfortunately. And this is what we're trying to do to, to rectify it. Help us, work with us with it. Um, let's have a look, see how we can alter your schedule, et cetera. And I think the industry has really enjoyed that. Um, there's a, there's unfortunately quite a few companies in, in, in the same arena uh, that don't operate in, in that way. Um, they get away with it, but um, I don't think they are respected as much as uh, control valve solutions. It's all about the people that you employ. Yeah. And then, them really buying into that kind of mentality. So how do you find those people? How do you get the right people into the business? <laughs> uh, so that's uh that's an interesting. That's an interesting topic. I think um, we're, we're up in Aberdeen. It's uh, it's classed as a city, but really it's a village. Um, there's not many things around um, apart from beautiful scenery, uh, very cold weather, lots of rain. Um, quality of life up here is is absolutely superb, um, and I think people people enjoy that. But 
not a lot of people want to move to Aberdeen. So um, you've got quite a small pool um, that, that you need to pull resources from. So it's it's really the first thing we look for is attitude, um, not 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 so much what you know. Um, it's all about have, have you got the right attitude to work for this business? We can we can educate you, we can uh, train you, coach you into how we operate and what we actually do. Um, it's not it's not rocket science what we do at all. It's valves. Valves are a, a, a fairly basic um, product. They can get complex, but you know we have experts within the business. So it's it's really difficult to. Um, it, you know, if you if you drew, if you drew up a job description and um, you wanted the ideal candidate for I don't know a, a valve engineer or a sales engineer, um, etc., you're probably not going to find it in in Aberdeen. The the you know which ticks every box. So you have to step back out out of the um, out of the norm uh, and think can can we work with these people first and foremost? Uh, can we shape them into a CVS employee? Uh, and, and have they got the skills um, to be able to take on, um, you know, new knowledge, uh, etc. So uh, once in a while, uh, somebody comes across that uh, has come from a, another valve company, for, ex for, for example, and uh, you hit the jackpot with it, but uh, not not very often, uh, I'm afraid. Yeah, but it's it's attitude first, absolutely. Skills trained second, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I'm. I really don't care if you've been to university or not been to university. It's, um, you know, me personally, I didn't, I didn't go down the educational uh, route. I had a, a four-year apprenticeship, um, and and I've, I've I've really enjoyed my career. Um, I've got people that have gone through university and and are working with us, and I, I think it's it's life skills more than more than anything in, in business. Um, you, you, I have a I have a saying, and excuse the French, but um, we don't employ our souls. So that's um, that's the first that's the first thing that um, I look for when somebody comes through the door. Uh, are they one or are they not? If they're not, then great. Let's let's continue this conversation and uh, and see if we can work together. Yeah, I I, for, I forget who who I heard saying it, but the the mantra for recruiting in their business was better a whole. Than an arsehole. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. and it and it works. Yeah, it's definitely. you know, you're, you're absolutely. What what do you do? So you've recruited people with the right attitude. How do you then get them bought into your culture in the business and keep them there? Yeah, so I I think it's it, it really starts from the recruitment process. So if we want people to be hit. Um, from day one, from day one, we have to be completely transparent. So the second they walk through the door, for me, it's imperative that everybody gets 100% trust. So it's for them to lose that trust, um, but you've really got to open up, demonstrate who you are. So the very first time they, they, they come, once we've recruited, uh, we have quite a rigorous uh, recruitment process, but once we've recruited uh, day one, um, they have two hours with myself, one-to-one, um, -one, uh, and it's really um, chill out, relax, let's have a chat. This is how CVS was born. This is a little bit about myself. This is a little bit about the team that we've created and, and what makes us special. Uh, and, and I talk about every single individual in the business. We go through the organization charts. I tell them who they are, where they live, how long they've been with us, their good, their good qualities, some of their downfalls maybe. Um, and then we release them for um, a week, uh, a full induction where they actually go through each individual team and they meet every single member of staff. Um, so they have at least an hour um, with, with every department. Um, and, and sometimes they'll just talk about life in general other times they'll talk about actual purpose you know the the, the job it, itself but you know some people's jobs are a little bit more simpler than than others so i'm absolutely fine them them talking about 15 minutes about what they actually do and why they do it and how they do it and then 45 minutes talking about how they come to live in aberdeen or how they where they were born and etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's really getting that family culture uh embrace from from day one i think after that first week um, they come back and, and, and see me and ask certain questions. 
And I, I, I just know we've got it right because everybody says that was absolutely fantastic, you know, to, to have a, a week induction to meet everybody. I, I almost feel part of it already. And for me, their, their career with CVS starts on week two and they get the same support. Everybody knows each other. <clears throat> um, and it, it, it just, it, it just plays to, um, to a successful uh, re recruitment and, and an onboarding process. So what's the biggest learning that you've had as an employer since you began in business? Well, um, I think probably that everybody's very different. Um, what and how they say things um, to one person uh, must be different to, uh, to how you say things to, to the next person, but the message needs to be the same. Um, you also never know what, what people are really going through. Um, they're often... Uh, I've often I found people have often got the best poker faces. Um, you know, I just I, I try and pick up on on the psychology of of all all my members of staff. You know, I do a lot of walking around um, just to clear my head. <clears throat> you know, you get bog, bogged down in the in the in the screens, so I just go for a walk and have a chat, see how people are. And I just I, I notice small differences, and I've, I've picked that up o over the years. And you know, when, I think when I first started, I was a bit blasé to it, and thought he's just he's having a shit day, or she's having a, a you know a, a, an off day, got out of bed wrong wrong side, etc. But actually, if you delve in a little bit, um, you can you can support these people, and you get you get so much back from that um in terms of loyalty if you, if you really care for your uh, your staff members but yeah I, th I think the biggest one is is everybody is different um you know there's very very few same people you can put them into similar boxes but um you've just got to treat people how they how they want to be treated um really yeah so you've got a you've built a good team you've got a great reputation in the industry where do you see yourself in five years' time? Uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the big question, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, you know, when, when, when I started this uh, this journey in 2009, it, it, it really snowballed. And I, I very quickly um, became overwhelmed uh, with the amount of business knowledge that, that I needed. And, and I didn't think... Well, I, d I don't think I, I didn't have. Literally, I didn't have. Um, I know I need an accountant. I walked into a mortgage lender uh, and and asked them if they've got an accountant. Um, and they said, "Is it a mortgage you look, you're looking for?" That that's how uh, green behind the ears I, I, I was. Um, kind of kind of thing. So it wasn't until probably about nine months in um, starting the business uh, business gateway approached me and a guy called john mcquestion uh rocked up in his uh rover 75 uh all blinged up and uh he said you need me in in your life and and by christ he was he was right you know we, we didn't get much financial support etc but what we did get is a as a wealth of knowledge um and i i actually got a um a 10-day session with a business consultant um called chris greenelch who was absolutely superb and he asked me exactly the same question where do we want to be in five years and i said i don't know where i'm going to be in five days chris you know i'm i'm juggling cash flow i'm i'm juggling recruitment we're setting up this facility up in aberdeen uh, i've got the procedures iso standards blah 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 all the business uh, things and and he, and he mapped it all out in a in a strategic orbit um and he said, "So, so where's where's the exit strategy?" Uh, and that's another question that I was blown away with. You know, I, I I just couldn't understand the question. I'd only just started this journey, and we're talking about exit. Uh, I was scratching my head, thinking, "What what is business all about? What is this exit strategy that that they talk about?" And it it took me the ten sessions to to really understand what the heart of of business uh, is, and I like Chris that that much. I actually employed him, and he became uh, my operations director uh, <laughs> for, for for a while. Which um, I'm my I'm my confidant and uh, and financial advisor as well. Chris was absolutely superb um, for, for me, and um, you know we 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 grew together with it. I think I, at one point, um, probably after that that first initial five year uh, point, where I realised actually this thing's going to be uh, sizable. Um, can I? 
am I the person to to manage this? Um, I've had to be honest with myself and say, I can take this business to 15 million. Uh, beyond that, I think somebody needs to uh, come in and really structure um, the business, whether that's with me or, or without me, you know, not, not really uh, work, work that out. We'll do uh, 11 million this year. So um, I must admit my heart's um, pounding a little bit when I, when I think of my statement of I can take this to 15 million. So I think that kind of answers your question in a roundabout way. Um, in five years time, I'm sure we'll be doing more than 15, uh, 15 million. So um, probably I, I won't be holding the reins, uh, I, I would think. Um, but um, we're, we're looking at, at taking the business uh, internationally. Um, we've got a few irons in the fire um, in, in certain areas of the, of the globe that we've not worked in um, before. We've got a lot of exciting things still coming in the in the North Sea. So, yeah, watch this space. Fantastic. One of the great things about setting goals is that when you set them, you don't need to know how you're going to achieve them. Yeah, that's... Because the next bit's learning how you're going to achieve them. I, I, I think 90% of, of the battle is actually getting it down on paper. If, you, if you've got something down on paper, whether it be a sales strategy, an operations strategy, a business strategy, financial strategy, as long as you've got something down, you've got something to work, work to. And you can always go back to the drawing board and say, we got that bit wrong. This is why we got it wrong. But if you can understand why you got it wrong, you, you just progress so much better. You, you've, got a, you've got a plan, definitely got a plan, no matter what that – what that plan says, if it's realistic, obviously, it's no good saying, you know, we're going to hit 50 million next year. Yeah, you, you've got to look at what resources you've got, capacity, capability, et cetera, and, and put a, a well thought out plan together. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then just understand why it doesn't and move on. Yeah. So if there's one piece of advice you could give to someone starting out on their own in business, uh, what would it be? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think. Um, oh, it's a, it's a it's a it's a tough one. Um, but for me, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be doing anything different. I, I really wouldn't. I think um, being in control, uh, but not being a control freak, allowing others to um, to flourish, to to assist, um, employ people who are more qualified than you are, um, give them responsibility. Uh, make sure you've got a good leadership team around you. Um, don't try and do it on your own. It will not work. You will fail. Um, I, I've learned that the hard way. Um, I think for probably the first seven years, um, I kind of ran things my own way. Um, I pretty much burnt myself out Uh and I, I just realized I can't continue on this path. I need good people around me. And I surrounded myself with, uh, with with good people. And we built up a team today that is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. Not not just the leadership team, but you know all the all the teams that cascade down. Um, but I, I think it is that um, make sure you've got a good leadership team. Make sure you delegate responsibility uh, wisely across across the business as as you grow. Yeah. Fantastic. So great culture. Know where you're going. Write it down and surround yourself. Recruit and surround yourself with people who are smarter than you are, better than you are. Great team. It's not rocket science, is it? It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's been absolutely superb. More than welcome. Thank you very much for having me.